Hello and welcome to a tutorial on using jQuery and JavaScript to make web applications. As you can see we're going to create a simple web app here and it's going to tell us about some jokes. So you can have a answer button that you click on and it reveals the answer to a joke. This is part two of the application. We're going to actually make the buttons work. In part one we did all of the CSS and HTML. So we're going to have to add a new document here and we're going to create this as our JavaScript file. So we'll save this. So I'm going to save it as jokesapp.js and now we can start programming in JavaScript. Okay, just like in CSS we need to add a link to an external file and so let's go into the header and I'm going to type in the word script this time. So script and source equals the name is jokesapp Dot js and then we'll end the script tag and so this will include the JavaScript we're also going to have to include a jQuery library so the programming that we're going to do requires jQuery and so we need to go to the internet to find it so let's search for jQuery and we will come to their website which is jQuery.com now we can link to it externally or we can download it so I'm going to download it and you will see here we got the most recent version which is 3.11 let's use that for now so in your downloads section you have to open up your downloads folder and you will see this jQuery file so let's copy your file that you just downloaded so right click and choose copy and now let's switch to the folder where you're saving your document and we're going to paste that item there so we have this file here called jQuery311min.js. You can leave it named here as it is, or what I prefer to do is to just rename it as jQuery.js. It's a JavaScript file, and that makes it very simple to remember the name of your file. So you should have this file as jQuery.js inside the folder where your jokes is saved. Now let's go back into our program. So we're in jokes HTML, and we have to add an external script here and we're going to do the same thing we're going to do a source but this time jQuery.js is the external file and you notice the location is just before the other jQuery file so these two need to go together so since jQuery goes first before the jokes app JS means that we are going to load this library and use all of its capabilities in our JavaScript script programming now that we have these two libraries loaded, we can go into the jokes app JS file and we'll start programming. The first thing that you do in JavaScript or in jQuery is that you have to check to see if your document has been fully loaded. Sometimes you know that it takes a little while, maybe up to five to 10 seconds to load a web page, and so we don't want to start working on any commands until the document is ready. And so here's the way that you check for that. You type in a dollar sign with parentheses document dot ready. And that's a function that will tell us if the document has been loaded. Now, what are we going to do if the document is ready? The action happens between the parentheses. So I'm going to put in here a new command. It's called function, which means it's time to do some action. A function also is ended with double parentheses. And then following that function is a curly brace. And so you're going to get this pattern in, J in jQuery all the time. You have these ending of curly brace parentheses and semicolon and so everything that is happening is inside of this command called ready now we're going to check to see if this actually works so I'm going to put in a command called alert alert is a pop-up menu that just says a message and so I'm gonna say ready to go and then remember end with a semicolon so let's save the work here go to file and save or control s and then switch back to the web page and reload it. Now when you reload, you get this message that says, ready to go. That means we know that the jQuery is working. If you didn't get that message, you've typed something wrong. I'm going to put my windows side by side so that way I can see what's going on in the web browser at the same time that I'm typing. So I'll move jokesapp.js in, in my text editor to the side. What I want to program next is an action based on the button answer. Inside the HTML file, you will see that button has an ID for each of these. This is button one, 
this is button 2 and so we can use that in our JavaScript code so now back in my JavaScript code I'm going to create an action based on that button here's how you select the button you put in a dollar sign parentheses and then inside that dollar sign parentheses you put in the item that you're listening for a click on so this is called pound sign button one so just like in CSS when you have pound signs for selectors you are selecting a action based on this item so the action that I want to listen for is a click so I'll put in here the word click now what do I want to happen if there is a click that's what we put inside here so just like we did before on the ready function we need to say we're going to create a new function and put parentheses in it the curly braces and then we press enter a couple times to give it some space and so there's that same ending to our function again curly braces parentheses and semicolon now inside of this function we can put some more actions let's test to see if it's working so just like I did before I'm going to check for an alert I'm going to say you clicked me and we should see a message only if there is a button click so I will save the file come back to my web page push the refresh button now there's no alert to say that the page is loaded but if I click answer I get the message that says you clicked me and so now I can tell that my button is actually working so we can delete this message that says you clicked me now what do I want to do if the button is clicked well I want to show the answer so let's take a look back in our HTML file and my joke answer is this area here on line 17 18 and 19 notice the ID that I assigned for my joke was answer one so as of right now answer one is hidden that's because in my CSS code I had told it that all answers anything with a class of joke answer has been set to display none well I'm going to reverse that now I'm going to go to my JavaScript and I'm going to select that item and tell it to show it so I'm going to use my dollar sign and I'm going to say I'm going to say pound sign answer one so that's the ID number for that particular joke and the command that is to make it visible is simple it's just the word show so let's save this and see if that works so I save the changes refresh the page and now when I click answer I get the answer here so let's repeat the process now I want to do the same thing for joke number two and three and any other jokes that I have in my place so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it so I'm using control C and control V and then I'm going to just simply switch the numbers from 1 to 2 and then I'm going to do it one more time and let's try it with joke number 3 so now that I have these all typed I will save the changes again and refresh the page so anytime I click on these answers they work now if yours are not working it's a good idea to check your answers to make sure that this here and this here match exactly with the page that you created earlier so HTML has these things called button one answer two, button one anything that you've typed on there has to match perfect now that we seem to have this working let's go add a few more jokes so I'm going to copy the last joke on my page and paste it I'm going to use control V and do that maybe up to six or seven or eight times and let's add some new jokes Go ahead and look them up on the internet if you don't know any jokes, but let's get a nice collection. So you can see that I've created a whole bunch of different questions and answers. So I have 10 different buttons and 10 different questions to go with them. Now, if I go and refresh my page, you'll see that I get the three answers to start with. But as soon as I get to number four, then I'm out of luck. There's no programming for the answers below. So I need to go back into my code, into the JS file and I need to make more button codes so I'm going to copy and paste uh, my third button and I'm going to create 10 of these one for each joke okay when I'm finished I will save my work refresh the page 
and you can see that I have a joke and an answer button that seems to work for every single one of these. Now I'd like to hide the answers after I've read them. So let's go back into our JavaScript code and add a new line. I'm going to add a line that will select every single joke on the page and hide it. So my selector is going to have to include everybody on the page. Let's go look on our HTML code. Fortunately, I've added a class called joke answer to every single one of my fields. And so I'm just going to use the selector class for joke answer. So let's go to here, type in my quotation marks, a period and joke answer. Now I'm using the period because I'm talking about the class joke answer, not the ID. So remember the, the pound sign is for IDs, period selectors in CSS are for all class items. So I should be able to copy this and paste it for every one of my items and then I will have a behavior that will hide all joke answers before it shows a single joke answer for this particular button. Okay, let's save the results and let's refresh the page. And so now you can see if I click show an answer, it will hide the other answers before it shows the one that I'm interested in. And so this behavior acts on every joke on the page. Now there's going to be some people out there that immediately see a problem. If you find yourself programming and copying and pasting and using the same code in many different places, you're probably doing it wrong. Now if you'd like to leave your code the way it is, that's just fine. This is the first time you've done any tutorials on jQuery likely, and so this is a simple way to do it. But for those of you that are maybe a little more experienced with it and want to see a better solution, let's follow these steps. I'm going to delete everything except for the first button. I want to change this code so that it affects every button on the page. Well, I'm going to use a, a keyword in here called this. This means which button have I clicked. So the keyword this means the closest referring calling object. And in this case, this means which button. Now I want to talk about the button and I want to show this answer. So the closest answer. So what I have to do is I have to get the parent of the button, which is the div up here. This is the parent. It's, this, this item encloses all the other items. So I want the parent of the button and then to go find something called joke answer within that div. So here's how it works. You say I want to go to um, find the parent. So in jQuery, there's something called dot parent and then we're going to do a find command. So within, the f within that parent item, we are going to find something that is a class of joke answer. And then we are going to show it. And so this type of programming is common in jQuery where you start chaining things together. So find the parent, find its joke answer item inside of it, and show it. Let's just see if that works. I hope it does. Let's save it, refresh the page, and sure enough, when we click, we get the exact same behavior. We're only showing one answer and hiding all others. And so that code right there, even though it might be hard to understand, it is a lot shorter. And if we had to go back and make changes to it, we would only make changes on line five instead of making changes to 10 different copies of code. And so that takes us to the end of the app development part of our application.